hard to wrap your mind around it. It's hard to really picture it and think about. But through all of this, we read that Jesus didn't cry out. He didn't begin to yell at them. Through all of this pain that we can't even imagine, we don't read that he yelled or argued or showed how upset he was. But then here in the darkness, not until he feels that he was alone, not until he felt like God had left him, did he start to cry out. This word directly translates to scream. Jesus broke his silence and began to scream into the darkness. This darkness had come. And even when he had remained silent through the beatings and the cruelty, through the blood and the tears, now he broke his silence and he began to scream. Eloi, Eloi, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did you leave me? As we sit in the darkness during this Lenten season, and as we really look at the fear in Jesus when God leaves him, and we hear that in him, I really want you to focus on that. And I also want you to know that light comes, right? We know that we begin to scream, but we have this hope that comes through our screaming and our shouting. Because even in the midst of the darkness, when we begin to scream, we see this same hope in Philippians, that he who began a work in you will bring it to completion. This light is in us, and it lightens up our darkness. We know what's happening when the darkness is coming, right? We know why this is happening, because Jesus is taking our place. Jesus was a substitution for us, and he took our place. We know that he was taking the place of sinners. He was taking my place. He was taking your place. The place of those who have fallen short, who don't live up to the full potential, who make the wrong choice, who don't do as we should, or sinners, for me, for you. I think sometimes we kind of glamorize the cross, right? We kind of talk about this story as something that was clean, something that was neat and tied up and that happened quickly, but we know that it wasn't. It's not something that was clean. It's not something that would have been talked about with ease in the months or the years to come. In Isaiah, it says that he was beaten to the point that he no longer resembled a human. It makes me uncomfortable to think about someone doing that at all, much less that they did it for me. He was beaten, and he was killed, and he did it for you. It's not a story. It's not something that we talk about but that didn't happen. We know that this happened, and it happened for you. I think even when people do small things, we get uncomfortable sometimes, right? When people do things for us. Has anyone offered to pay for your meal, and then you try to fight them for the check at the end? I think that we as people, as humans, we want to earn something, right? We want to deserve it. So I think that's why we try to act like the suffering of Christ and the actual murder of Jesus was something that was shiny and it was a clean thing, but it wasn't. It was suffering and it was blood and it was horrific and it was for you and you did nothing to deserve it. Our salvation, my salvation, your salvation, it was bought and it was a steep price that was paid. First Peter says, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was beaten to the point of death. But he suffered through that so he could hold out until the cross. He was attacked and could have stopped it, but chose to suffer for people who didn't deserve it. For you and for me. Jesus is filling the gap. We fall short, right? We leave a lot left to be done. We don't do enough to fill this gap. And then we create space between us and God. Because we choose to sin and we are a sinful people. We leave a gap. And Jesus was literally laying himself in this gap. He was taking what we deserve. Because of Jesus, we don't get what we deserve right? We don't deserve to be a friend of the creator of the universe. We don't deserve to be able to speak directly to and hear from the one who heals and gives mercy. 
We deserve to be forsaken. We deserve to be forgotten. But instead, Jesus paid that price. He laid himself out to cover the gap that we created, and he took what we deserved. And we see that as we hear him scream into the darkness, Eloi, Eloi, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The pain in those words is the pain that we create. It's the pain that we deserve. So just as we know that Jesus took our place, we take the place of Jesus. That means that we, as the people of God, are now called to live the life that Jesus lived. We are called to take the place of the one who took ours. We're told this in Micah, worry, we are called to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. This is the place that we take. That's the job that we have now. That's the seat that we've been given. So as we've talked about in the last few weeks, this is the time to look at yourself. This is the time to look at God and acknowledge the difference.